I like our uh, epistle reading this morning. Uh, we're here still at the beginning of 1 Thessalonians, and Paul is kind of building upon his salutation that we uh, visited about last week, and uh, he's now moving on to uh, write about how uh, his ministry had gone there while he was there with them in Thessalonica. And in many ways, his, his words are both a reflection, but I think also a celebration of how things went or how things had turned out, especially after he had been there. And Paul is writing about how, as they had came to the church in Thessalonica, that they had both cared and shared while they were there. <clears throat> Actually, it was more than just being there. It was more like they were there together with them might be a better way to look at it. Because they had both poured themselves into the relationship with the Thessalonians, as well as sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with them, sharing the gospel with them. Now, sometimes it can be a little difficult to try to figure out how to connect a sermon to a passage like this. Uh, we strive as preachers to come up with an illustration or a story or something, and I was really kind of struggling this week, and I prayed and I asked God for help with the sermon, and as it turns out, God answered that prayer as well. We celebrated a lot of answered prayers this morning, because Friday night at the fellowship, uh, Steve was visiting with us, and he shared a story of how things unfolded last Sunday, right? Right. If you remember, he wasn't here last Sunday, so he was out on the road. And uh, I'd just like to invite you to share how that all worked out, the ups and downs of that, so to speak. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Stacy, always glad to share a story. Ask Tanner. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I suffer with many hang-ups, habits, and uh, other destructive things I've been battling with. Those of you that have had strokes, raise your hand and say amen. 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 Those of you that haven't, say praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was uh, went to Wichita last weekend to visit my brother in the hospital, in the veterans hospital. He had a colon uh, surgery for cancer, and we just got it all. Anyway, uh, I went to leave after visiting him and my great aunt, my aunt, and uh, I've been up and down uh, Kellogg, and I've been, you know, up uh, I-35 going from Swan and I-70. And, you know, I was driving around Wichita there, and I got a shimmy in the car front end, so I I stopped and looked at it. And thought, well, darn great, it must be uh, caliber must be warped, and because uh, I stopped fast, and so I thought I'll go home down 96 and uh, go through Hutch and see old college buddy. I was going down 96, uh, I called my other brother in Ark City to see why he hadn't came to Wichita, and his son-in-law answered and said, well, they're heading there now. So I said, okay. So I turned around and go back to Wichita. I by call which about 12 miles out, and uh, the front end was really kind of getting kind of shaky, but uh, I slowed down about 80, and uh, <laughs> I went by this intersection, and uh, there's a car sitting there, and just I went by, my right front tire fell off, and uh, I thought, man, this ain't good. And, uh, so I get over the side of the road, and, uh, and I thought, well, as bad as this traffic is, I better get off the road while it's still moving. So when I went off the road with no wheel on your car, uh, it's just plows dirt, you stop. And uh, so I got out, dust and settling, and Looked around and thought, man, I did it this time. And uh, that wasn't very smart. And I thought, I better go find my tire. So I started walking back. Because last I seen it, is back there about a quarter of a mile heading out in this field. This minivan come pulling up. Man and his family. And, and uh, he, uh, his wife said, uh, hey, uh, your, your tire. She goes, we 
never seen nothing like that. But she goes, you're tired. It was heading out and it turned. It's been chasing you. And when you stopped, it fell over. It's just right over there. <laughs> really? And, uh, I said, well, thanks so much for stopping. I said, nobody stops anymore. I said, uh, uh, I I'm really thank you for checking, you know, and seeing if I was all right. The man said, well, are you all right? He goes, man, he goes, I, I just can't believe that. He goes, I, we, we never see nothing like that. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm fine. He goes, well, your car is going to have a lot of damage up there on that. For a wheel to fall off like that, your, your studs are all going to be sheared. Your lug nuts are missing. Maybe your tire's damaged. Do you belong to the auto club? And I said, no, I don't. But I said, uh, I, I, I guess I'll see what I can find and do. And so anyway, he said, well, you know, can we do anything? I said, nah. I said, but just thanks for stopping and checking my welfare. I said, I'm really impressed. And, and uh, anyway, uh, they said, okay, so they drove off. And I went out in the field and got my tire. Called my cousin Mike, he lives, he probably 20, 30 miles from there. He drives. He said he'd head over. And I said, you know, you can get a tow truck. I said, I'm in pretty bad shape here. So, uh, well, he'd drive over and see what he, he could do. So, uh, I just thought, man, I am so happy that that tire went out in that field and didn't wipe out another car. Um, Glad of my car, I, I kept it under control and then pull out the traffic and have a wreck because there was a car right by me. So I was trying to get to the trunk and see what I could do. And I pulled this heavy duty truck, service truck, and it was a guy in it that had stopped. And uh, he was in work clothes. He goes, uh, he got out, he goes, uh, you know, uh, you really, you really seemed uh, thankful. And, he goes, I said to my wife, uh, I'm just going to go get our own service truck and see if we can help him out. And uh, I said, oh, bless you. I said, man. I said, uh, I said uh, you know, anything you do, he goes, uh, well, he goes, how bad is it? So we went up and he was just like what he said. The deal the wheel fits on was all chewed up. I mean, it was gone. I mean, it was chewed up. And so, uh, we pulled the car back up on the pavement and went to work. And my cousin showed up and uh, he went back to the truck. His name was Bruce Seidel. And uh, my cousin Mike said, Who is that guy? He goes, How did you get him here? I said, it's like, like the Lord sent him. I said, He just came. I said, uh, I couldn't believe it. And uh, we took it apart and uh, then went into Colwich and got the parts we needed. <coughs> Packed everything back together, and, uh, and I headed back the other way. Before the guy left, I said, "Well, you know, I only got this much cash. But I can send you more because, you know, I was looking at a tow truck. And I was looking at them jacking up the price on the parts after they get them." I said, uh, <laughs> "You know, I said I, I just can't believe I'm, I'm ready to go. I was looking at a lost day of work, spending the night. I said nothing could have got done tonight." I said, heck, I said, I'm going. I passed him one tow truck, probably didn't get here. And uh, he said, nah, I'll keep your money. He goes, uh, I'm glad I was, could help you out. He goes, you get a chance, you help out the next person you come across that needs help any way you can. He goes, uh, you don't have to overhaul the car or anything, but you know, sometimes it's a word of, uh, of uh, care. And uh, checking them out is all you need to do. He goes, uh, but uh, just spread the favor to another fellow person. And he goes, uh, keep the Lord's work going. So, uh, anyway, that's my good story. And uh, I was glad to share it with you. Thank you, Pastor Stacy, for letting me uh, spread, spread the word through a good story. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the interesting thing was when we were sitting at the table and he started sharing, it, we immediately go where I think sometimes we we tend to like to go, whether it's serious or not, but it's like, <laughs> well, if you would have been in church Sunday morning. <laughs> do, do we not do that to ourselves? Do we not lean that direction instead of 
Now, I think this was before we heard the entire story. But anyway, but it's so easy to sit there and go, oh, <laughs> that was very God messing with you. No. <clears throat> when you hear the whole story, it was God rescuing you. <clears throat> okay? We serve a loving God. And that's the story that we're seeing unfold in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians this morning. This is, this is kind of that type of modern day picture. They went among the Thessalonians. They spent time with them. They shared themselves. They sacrificed to be there. That's what Paul's talking about. That's what Paul's celebrating is this type of selfless effort. This, this stepping out with just a, we're going to come among you, we're going to care for you, we're going to develop a relationship with you, and we are going to share the good news with you, and all we ask in return is that you just keep it going. It's one of the most biblical stories I've heard in a long time. Now, here's the other thing, and this is one of those deals where I'm not going to say God was messing with me, but... It messed with my head as the rest of the evening unfolded because it was dark when we, we left the, the farm up there and I my phone did not bring me back the same way that it took me up so I ended up on a really awesome road. <laughs> Path. It may have been a field but I don't remember going across any cattle cars. I'm not sure but it was... So, but it spits me out, and it spits me out on 281 is what my phone tells me. It's like, I was going towards Waldo. How did I end up north of Florida? But it actually was 281.18, and I was just a little bit on the other side of the junction. So it, it was all fine, but as I come up on the junction, I see these flashing lines. And it's an RV. And then it's pulled off onto the side, and you can tell by the way it's off on the side, and kind of tip, it ain't healthy. So it's like, well, you know, I'm in my little Kia Soul. I've got like $10 worth of $1 tools. And the best thing I can do for them is I'll call the sheriff's office. So I keep driving, drive past them, try to stay on the road while I'm trying to find the number for the sheriff's office, and then realize with every second that goes by, I'm less likely to be able to make a call as I get closer and closer to the parsonage. Um, then it hit me. What am I doing? I celebrated Steve's story, but here I am driving by. <laughs> and why? Because, well, I can't do nothing. I don't have any tools. I don't have a service truck. So I hung a U-turn, went back, pulled up behind the, the RV and get out. And the guy that's in the RV is sitting there. And it's like, you okay? And he said, yeah, I've got help coming. i got a couple people coming. Got my brother, and he's called somebody. It sounded real similar. It's like, well, I don't know if I could really help you or anything. I don't really have any tools. Do you need anything else? Can you know, can I make a call or is there anything you need? He said, no. He said, well, I want to tell you something. I've been out here for about an hour, and you're the first person to stop. I appreciate the fact that you stopped. What I want you to take away from our epistle reading this morning is that you do not have to be the great evangelist that Paul was. You don't have to be a mechanic with a service truck and all the tools and experience you need to come up with a near-perfect solution to make a difference. A lot of what Paul is talking about is just caring and sharing. Taking that time to not just... Because if I, what would have happened if I would have called the sheriff's office? It would have taken them... 10, 15 minutes, probably get somebody headed that way. It'd take them 30 minutes to get there. They'd have to get there to call somebody. It would have been an hour, hour and a half before help could have gotten there if you wouldn't have already had help coming. But by stopping, if he would have needed help, it could have got there a little bit sooner, maybe. But if nothing else, he felt good because somebody cared. It gave him something to feel better about than just standing by the road waiting by himself. I also feel bad that I didn't share any of those marshmallow chocolate brownies with him. I remember those when I got to Parsons and like, <laughs> you know, I could have really been a hero and given him those. I did not drive back and drop them off. But anyway, uh, 
Let's see, where were we? Parsonage, Steve's story. If we move back to the scripture reading, uh, John Wesley wrote notes on, on the Bible. And in his uh, notes on the New Testament, this is what he said about verse 6 from our epistle reading this morning. He says, nor from others. Who would have honored us more if we had been burdensome? That is, taken state upon ourselves. Uh, sometimes I think we sometimes feel we're too busy, too important. Sometimes I think we take state upon ourselves, as Wesley would put it. We put ourselves before, like I did. Until Steve's story got the best of me and I turned around. It's easy to get caught up in those little moments where it's easier to not actually stop and talk to somebody face to face. We do that a lot in our day-to-day -day lives. We communicate with people and never even see them or hear their voice because we do it through texting or an email. It's very easy to be impersonal. It's very easy to keep walls up in this day and age. In verse uh, 7, Wesley writes, or about verse 7, Wesley writes, but we were gentle, mild, tender, in the midst of you. Like a hen surrounded with her young, even as a nurse cherisheth her own children, the offspring of her own womb. The thing about the NRSV that we shared, the version we shared this morning, is it talks about a nurse taking care of a child as their own. If you look at other versions of the Bible, many popular ones, NIV and et cetera, it actually says a mother nursing her child. And to me, that's a big difference. And it's another example of how things can, small things can make a difference. Because a nurse taking care of a child as if it were own could mean anything. It could mean two aspirin or two Tylenol and a pat on the head or shoulder and hope you feel better. But when you envision a mother nursing her child, Holding that child, feeding that child, nourishing and nurturing that child right here. That's a whole different picture. In the scope of the stories that were shared this morning, the guy with the service truck is probably a really good equivalent or a very kind of metaphorical look at that type of getting in there, getting your hands dirty, as opposed to me going... Well, it made you feel better now that I stopped. Because that's about all I did. But I think it made a difference. Paul, thank God, is challenging us to really take this love God, love neighbor stuff seriously this morning. And beyond this morning. Wesley's notes on verse 8 say, To impart our own souls. To lay down our lives for your sake. To me that mirrors the words of John 15, 13 where it says no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Fortunately, Jesus literally gave his life for us. And also fortunately, we are not readily or usually expected to literally lay down our lives for others. A lot of times it's just expected to spend an hour or two, 15 minutes or less, in my case, the other night, for somebody else. There's so much we can do if we will come into relationship, if we will come alongside people. We were visiting the other night, uh, Tanner and Les, and we were talking about ministry, and we were talking about those times where we don't always feel completely equipped and we get thrown into situations. And this happens in anybody's ministry as a Christian. But if you talk to pastors, you'll run into those pastors who will tell you that story where they were overwhelmed, they didn't know what to do, and they came alongside somebody and they just sat there because they didn't know what to say next. But that person that they were with would come up 
maybe a, a week or two later, maybe a year later, and say, you know, that meant so much to have you there. You said all the right things. If you've been in one of those spots, you'll probably be sitting there going, I didn't say anything that I remember that was anything. No, I didn't say a word that was worthwhile. Folks, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have all the tools. God will fill in the gaps. So uh, I guess uh, my hope and my prayer this morning is may we find the boldness to do what God and what our examples from our story and our example from 1 Thessalonians is challenging or calling us to do. May we find the boldness to do just that as we live out our relationship with God and our neighbors. Amen.